in this session we are going to focus on how do we get from literature to research problem objectives and questions and how do we draft objectives and questions from a research problem now what are the contents of this particular session we are going to focus on how to draft a research problem that is specific enough so that you are not tempted to explore paths that are only indirectly related to your research problem the literature identifies gaps in the current knowledge and you will learn how to frame a research problem with these gaps and finally you will draft research objectives and research questions from the problem statement and this will be explained through an example now the first thing that one should do is whenever they are focusing on research is that they have to identify gaps in the knowledge now before you define your research problem you need to have a broad and deep understanding of your research field failure to do so you might not be able to understand what research problems are there in the in the field or in the particular area that you are interested in now when you have broadly read and deeply broadly and deeply read in your field and related fields you will suddenly start to see the open opportunities you will yourself start to figure out these are the issues these are the problems that have been addressed in the literature but these things seems to be missing for instance i was doing the research on servant leadership and after reading on servant leadership for a couple of months i found out that there are a number of scales on servant leadership but there is none on servant leadership in higher education i was going through corporate social responsibility and organizational performance and i found out there are a number of research studies on corporate social responsibility and individual employee behaviors however with current market trends and the way organizations operate they operate in teams but there is no research on social responsibility and team outcomes so this only happens when you start reading in detail and you have to read deeply read as much as possible in order to get to a problem statement that is worth research now this process is uh, illustrated in a figure which i will show uh, in a later slide granted very often you will not be left entirely on your own when you are developing your research question obviously your supervisor prob probably already has an idea or a topic he wants you or she wants you to work on now obviously if you are not an independent researcher if you are not uh, a phd or if you are uh, a student obviously uh, your supervisor will have a lot of say in what you are working on and how you work on it however discussion with your supervisors and colleagues in your research group are important to see the broader context of the work in your research group and to see how your work fits in the work of your research group now this is particularly important this will not only develop your knowledge it will help you understand the concept and the field in a much broader and better uh, and help you develop a better understanding of the area now don't make the mistake of isolating yourself sometimes uh, we, we we think that okay uh, i do not do not need to share uh, this idea with my research group now you have to trust your supervisor you have to trust your colleagues and discuss your idea with them in order to have their critical view point your research question is not something you write one morning after a dream it's a result of reading thinking about what you read and discussing these thoughts with your peers and supervisor it is highly iterative procedure you read you discuss you read you discuss you read and you discuss finally you get a problem that is worth worthy of research now this is the figure that we were referring to you start with literature review and you look into small exploratory calculations interdisciplinary methods from field x can be suitable you know, for problem in the field y topics authors disagree about or there are if there are contradictions in existing research for example a method might be utilized in one area and needs to be utilized in another area or there are very few researches in a particular area now what do we know what do we not know now this is the an important question 
what we already know from the literature and what the literature has asked to be assessed. What are the future research directions? What are the limitations of existing research? Once we know these things, it's much easier for us to get to a problem statement. Failure to do so, you will be able to obviously draft a problem statement, but that won't be concrete and that won't be a problem because there might be someone or somewhere in literature, there, there might be an answer to this problem. So you have to dig deep. Okay, now there are uh, a few videos on the channel uh, regarding problem statement and uh, how to search or where to search and how to start your search or where to start. Uh, the link will be in the description. Now moving on, while reading the literature, there are a number of different empty spots you can identify. Here are a few examples to get you started. Now variables relationship that not that have not been assessed now you need to focus on what relationships that have been assessed and what relationships are missing as i have quoted earlier i was looking into the literature and i found out that there are number of studies that have evaluated the impact of csr on individual employee outcomes but i could hardly find any research on the impact of csr on team outcomes except for one so and after digging deep and searching through all different databases, I couldn't find any research. So this is or these relationships were actually missing. Now applying the model from field X in field Y, for example, assessing the role of servant leadership in higher education or social responsibility has primarily been studied in the field of or uh, in business related uh, um, organizations or corporations. But there is well, there was actually uh, very few studies on social responsibility in higher education or um, a third point could be application of new methods for example FSQCA or multi-level modeling now FSQCA have been ex extensively utilized in uh, social sciences uh, primarily in political science but there is very limited use of FSQCA in uh, management and business research now, if you think you have an idea for your research problem, prepare a short document on outlining the gaps you found in the literature or the open options to explore that you informed from your literature review. Now, what you need to do is keep record of what you are reading. Find out whenever you find out a gap and you think that it is a gap, put it in writing. This will help you in, in two ways. First, you will have a um, uh, sort of uh, record of what you have read and what are the gaps pertinent in existing literature and second it will help you in your writing of your introduction and your literature review briefly discuss the key references and how you see your first idea of research problem framed inside the literature now this will obviously help you draft your research problem have something on the paper to discuss with your supervisor. Obviously, this will give you uh, a strong base. This will give you uh, a chance to discuss uh, something that is in writing with your supervisor. Now, this will help you show him or her that you are really serious and you've got a background and you have, you, you have a plan to work on a particular research. It's always better to sketch the background to your idea. Now, there are a number of technical requirements your research problem needs to fill. For it to be actually a research problem, Dr. Helen, Helen Kara, an independent researcher and writer, summarizes these technical requirements as follows. Now, there are a few requirements for a research problem. The first thing, your research problem must be very specific. You have to avoid general problem statements, statements like to ascertain the factors that affect organizational performance. This is too general. There could be millions of factors that could affect organizational performance and phrase a research problem that is specific if you have done your homework from the literature review making sure the question is specific or the research problem is specific and follows from situating your intended work in the body of knowledge that you have looked at now so you you have to situate your problem in the body of knowledge that you have reviewed your research problem should have limits. Keep in mind that you will need to solve your research problem. If you've come across or, or are participating in solving a large problem, know that you cannot answer all the problems in a single study. 
make sure that you tackle a realistic and delimited topic for example you cannot have all the employee behaviors in a single study you cannot have all the team outcomes in a single study you cannot have all the measures of organizational performance in a single study so your research problem should be limited and finally your research problem should not show bias or an opinion be prepared to look at your research problem from various angles find out if there are any contradictions in existing research find out if there are any inconclusive evidence available in the literature these are the two things that you can do to show that there is no bias in your opinion now you can self assess your research problem as well now once you have crafted your or you have got uh, um, a draft research problem and and you have outlined in a short document how your research problem fits in the general body of knowledge it is time to self assess your first uh, or your problem statement self evaluating your research problem will improve your research problem and the document now when self assessing your research problem you have or you can use the following criteria is it original enough this is the most important question that one should ask now at the end of your dissertation you need to show which original contributions to your field have you made you have to develop work that has not been done before is your research really original now how do you know what is originality now read through existing research in the field and find out how people refer to originality how do they write about originality is it originality that some study might be done in uk and you you are doing it in pakistan maybe india is it original that some study might have been done in america and you are doing it in europe well in case of business research this is not entirely an original research practicality is the second thing that you need to focus on do you have an idea of the methods that you want to use to investigate your research questions are these methods possible from practical point of view do you have all the data tools available now some problems may not be practical now once you fail to delimit your research problem obviously you are avoiding this notion of practicality it's only practical if you limit your research if you limit your research problem and focus on specific issues concepts constructs and variables the last thing is feasibility can you finish it in within the required time will you need specific training before you can apply a certain analysis technique or do you have the right kind of data or will you have access to the right kind of data so you have to answer these three questions and all three are particularly important but the most important is originality now problem statement research questions or research objectives and research questions after reading into the literature the researcher now can narrow down the research problem from the original abroad the question problem does not necessarily mean that something is seriously wrong the problem question could indicate an interest in an issue where finding the right answers might help to improve an existing situation thus the problem statement is a clear concise precise and brief statement of the questions to be or the question to be investigated with the goal of finding an answer or solution now scientific research starts with a definite aim or purpose to find solution for identified problems a problem statement that includes a gen the general objective and research questions of the research should be developed now what you need to do is you need to develop a clear concise statement that expresses your aim or purpose that further leads into a research objective and research question gathering initial information about the factors that are possibly related to the problem will help us or the scholars to narrow the broad problem area to define the problem statement so what you need to do is when you gather the initial information about the factors that you are interested in once you dig deep this will help you draft your problem statement now what's the anatomy of the problem statement now determine the extent to which okay this is a sample problem statement 
Determine the extent to which career satisfaction mediates the relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction in higher education institutions. Now, how does or how should a problem statement look like? Now, to identify the key terms in your problem statement, look for the subjects. Are there subjects in your problem statement? Yes, there are. Servant leadership, career satisfaction and life satisfaction are the subjects in this problem statement. Are there verbs? Yes, there is impact and mediating. There are two verbs. And objects, where do you want to study? Higher education institution is the object in your statement. Now, definition of key terms must be precise in order to identify the subject of the research and to gain access to relevant academic literature. Precise definitions will allow you to explore the literature. Now, you need to understand what concepts you want to search and you need to understand how they are defined. Failure to have a clear, concise definition might obviously lead to identification of literature that may be beyond the need of your research. The literature review will help you refine your research objectives and research questions and thus to develop a feasible topic of research, again reiterating the need of critical literature review, reiterating the need of focused literature review. And how do you develop the focus? When you dig deep, when you keep on reading the latest research in the area. Now here is an example of how a problem statement can be shaped into research objective and finally into research question. Assume our problem statement is determine the extent to which career satisfaction mediates the relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction. Now the problem is the issue that needs to be addressed in this research is to evaluate or assess the mediating role of career satisfaction on the linkage between servant leadership and life satisfaction. Now, how do you draft this problem statement into research question, uh, sorry, research objectives? Now, the first thing is you, uh, the first objective is to assess the role of or the impact of IV on DV to identify the impact of servant leadership on life satisfaction. Second is to investigate the effect of servant leadership on career satisfaction, which is the mediating variable. Third is to ascertain the impact of career satisfaction on life satisfaction. So mediating variable to dependent variable. And finally, assess the mediating role of career satisfaction on the linkage between servant leadership and life satisfaction. Now moving from research objective, how do you draft your research questions from your research objectives? Now the first thing that you could do is just change that into the form of a question. Does servant leadership affect life satisfaction? The second is, is there an impact of servant leadership on life satisfaction, on career satisfaction? Third is, does career satisfaction influence life satisfaction? And finally, whether career satisfaction mediates or mediate the relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction. So once you answer these questions, your objectives will be achieved. And once you achieve those objectives, your problem will be solved. This is the relationship between a problem statement, research objectives and research questions. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to get from literature to a problem statement and what things that you need to focus on and how to develop research objectives and research questions from a problem statement. Thank you very much.